All right, it's time to add a little bit of excitement to our project. Right now we have a white background with some black text on it. It's not so uh, fantastic to look at. We have at least some links that bring us between our two pages uh, or off even to another page, right? Which is great, but uh, pictures are such a big part of the web that we want to add them into this project. And to create or add images in, we use an image attribute and they do make it a little bit easier. It's not with I, it is with IMG. So in this case, let's go and take a look at this project. Uh, the first page has right after the H1, we have this image and we have the logo. I'm gonna add this image first and then we'll bring the logo in after. So uh, right here, after my H1, we can come in right here and we do an IMG like that. And let's hit save and go and take a look at our project and we get an empty space. Because once again, we have an image, but the browser doesn't know what to do with this. It's a lot like a link in that it needs to have some attributes. But unlike links that have one attribute with the href, images have two attributes. We have a source and we have an alt. So the source is src is equal to, and then we have an alt is equal to. So source of the image and the alternative text that we need to bring in. Uh, one thing that's a little bit annoying, I won't lie, <laughs> is with a link, you have an href, and then with an image, you have a source, and they're both pointing to things, and it just feels like it's very similar in, in what they're doing, and they're very basically exactly similar in how they actually work to be able to get to different things, where you can use relative links and just put in the file that you have, or you can use absolute links and get things from other places in exactly the same way. And so if ever you aren't sure if it's an href or a source, just try one. And if it doesn't, you know, you, you put an href in your image and it doesn't load when you look at your browser, that's fine. Uh, just then switch that out for, to switch it over to the source. And very quickly you will start remembering which one you need, I promise you. But at the beginning, it's completely normal if you mix up which one you should be using in which situation. Don't worry about it if that happens to you. But with our image right there, so we have these two different attributes. And as I said, the source is going to point to our image and get the source. That one's the easier one. Uh, the alt, you might be wondering what that's for, or the alternative text. So to explain what the alternative text is, I'm gonna actually use it first. So what you wanna do is actually describe what the picture is. It's an indoor bouldering gym with quite a lot of people uh, Nobody's actually climbing by the looks of it. That's kind of interesting, but uh, let's just say an indoor uh, bouldering gym with a lot of people. Yeah, we'll just do that. Uh, we'll talk more about the descriptions that we're putting here. Uh, and then let's for now, I'm just gonna put that. We have no source, but if I come over to here and I push refresh, you can see I have a broken image and it shows me the text that I wrote. And so one of the purposes of having alternative text is that if the image fails to load for some reason, at least there's a little bit of information about what that image was supposed to be, especially if it's adding context to the page. Uh, this can be really important to have. The other reason we wanna have good alt text and descriptive alt text on an image is because of things we've already talked about it with assistive technologies. So if somebody's visiting your site that has poor vision and they are using a tool that reads the website out to them, it will also read out the alternative text that's on an image as well. And so it's especially important if you're using images to add context to the bigger picture. And if a sighted user is seeing it and it's adding to the experience, you probably wanna have good alt text here as well. And this, I wouldn't even consider the best alt text in the world. Uh, the more descriptive your alt text is about what's actually in the image, the better, without of course being overly verbose. But you do wanna find a good balance and describe what is in the image. And it's really important to have good alt text. The other thing with alt text is uh, where it's not only assistive technologies, Google bots will also do it. So all the, the search engines, it gives the search engine information about what the images are as well, which can be good for search, whether it's image searches. So it actually knows what the images are, but just within the larger context of what your website is as well. The one thing is sometimes people will try and boost their, it's called their search engine optimization by like coming into the alt text and just throwing a whole bunch of keywords in here instead of actually making it meaningful. First of all, the search engine bots are way too smart to fall for stuff like that these days. It might have worked way back in the day, but no longer. And you'd just be ruining the experience for people that are relying on alt text. So meaningful alt text all the time, good to have. That out of the way, we wanna get our source working. And for this, there is another little trick to the relative link that we looked at previously. Because when we did our uh, the absolute link, HTTPS or HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, but when we did our relative links, we were just putting in the file name. 
because as I said, we are going from our index to our getting started. It's a little bit more complicated when we're doing that with our images because my image is in this folder. So if we go and take a look at the, the image I want, uh, this is my boulderinggym.jpg. If I were just to write that boulderinggym.jpg and hit save on there, my image is still broken. It's not going to find that image because that image isn't here. It doesn't know where, to, it can't find that image. You have to tell it exactly where that image is. And this is part of how relative links work. Whereas we're going from our index, we have to go into the images folder. So to be able to do that, here where I have the SRC, I'm gonna write images and then put forward slash. And you can see VS Code's even like helping me out. It's like, which one of these do you want? I already have the file name, so I won't click on it. But we're doing, we're going to our images folder. So we're going from this index file to the images. And then when we get inside the images folder, we're looking for something. So we're going from this index file, it's going to the images folder, it's opening that folder up, and then it's looking inside of here. And then we're finding that bouldering gym. So if I come here and I save my file, and now I refresh, suddenly the bouldering gym appears and we have a nice functional image on our website and it's looking much better than it was before. It adds a little life and all of that to our site. And one last thing that you might've noticed right now <laughs> is with my image, we have the image source there. Uh, we have this alt tag that's on there. One thing I didn't do is I didn't close my image. I don't have a closing image right there, right? You might be going, well, why not? Don't we need to close every element that we open? Most of them we do, but images are one of the few elements we don't actually have to close because there's no content that would go here. Like it doesn't make sense to close an image and they're actually considered self-closing elements. In the previous versions of HTML, you actually would do this, where you do a forward slash within the opening tag. So this would indicate that it's self-closing. In HTML5, we don't have to do that. It's perfectly valid to do this. So this won't cause any issues if you include it. Some people say you should always do it because it's explicit and you're showing that it's self-closing. Other people don't care. I'm one of those people who don't care. So I'm not gonna include it in there. I just put my image, source, alt, we're good to go. But if you're watching other tutorials or you're reading other tutorials or things like that, you might see with the forward slash it's in here. So this is just to indicate that it's a self-closing tag and we don't need to have like a close image. So just like that, perfectly fine. My image is rendering and we're good to go. We have one more image that we wanna bring in, which is our logo. So for the logo, it is a little bit different because it's an image format that you might not have seen before, which is an SVG. And maybe you have if you've worked in the world of vector graphics, and that's what SVG actually stands for, Scalable Vector Graphic. And it's just a different type of image. Uh, it's a really big world where you can do lots of things like inline SVGs, and it can be this whole thing that you get into. But the simplest way to use an SVG is the exact same way that we've already used this one here. And they're very commonly, you'll see SVGs used for images. So for that, we're gonna come in and say image, SRC is equal to, ALT is equal to, and we can close that triangle bracket there. Make sure you always remember to close that off. And then for the source, once again, it's a relative one. We have to move into our images folder. So we can write images. I gotta spell it right, images, forward slash, and then I can just choose my logo.svg here. And I can hit save, we can come back over to here, hit refresh, and you can see at the top there, my logo has come in. And that's awesome, <laughs> we have a logo now. Uh, and it works, as I said, the same way as a regular image. So that's nice and simple. The question when you have logos or icons and other things is what should we use for the alt here? And it's a bit of a bigger question uh, in a sense because sometimes icons or other things will just be decorative. And if you have something that's purely decorative and it doesn't really have any extra meaning to the website, it's not adding context or anything like that, you can just leave the alt empty like this, exactly as we have it now. You do need to include it because for an image to be considered valid, it has to have the alt attribute on there. But when you don't include a description here, what you're doing is you're telling the browser in assistive technologies that this is just purely decorational. So it doesn't need to expose it to a screen reader or something like that. However, if you think that the logo is important, so we could say like Boulder, uh, Boulder Incorporated or something is the name of the company and you feel like that makes sense within the context of the website, then including something like that for the logo could definitely be something that you do. So with that done, I'm gonna encourage you to go and add the logo over on the second page without copying and pasting. <laughs> it's very tempting just to go and say, oh, I need a second page, I can copy paste something over. 
when you're more familiar with writing code, then that's completely fine. But when you're in these early stages, don't do that. Uh, you want to write all the code just so you get very familiar with actually writing it out yourself. So we can jump on over to here and you can add them in. I'd encourage you right now to pause the video, go and add both of those images in. And once you're done adding them, you can jump on over to the next lesson. Or if you get stuck or you just want to see me do it as well, then you can unpause this video, watch me go through the rest of it, and then we can move on into the next lesson. So I'm going to assume you've already done that. You've paused it while I was doing my little ramble there. And I'm going to go and add the two of them in here. So I'm going to say, uh, let's just make this bigger so it makes it easier for you to see my code. There we go. And we're going to come where that red line is there. Uh, we want an image, SRC is equal to, ALT is equal to, and we close the triangle bracket. We're going into my images, and then we're finding the logo. And then here we said we're doing a bolder ink, just like that. Fantastic. So there's the logo on the second page. And then my other image was all the way down at the bottom after my ordered list. So find the end, the closing tag for my ordered list right there. And then I can come and say IMG, SRC, ALT, closing triangle bracket. And then I can come inside my source. We want to go to my images folder, find my getting started outdoors. Then we can move on over to the alt and I'm just holding shift to scroll sideways uh, since I don't have word wrap on right now. And for this image, the easiest thing to do is actually look at what we've done. So let's go and I've saved my work. I'm going to go and navigate over to that other page. And when we're writing our alt text, again, we want to be as descriptive as we can. And so for this one, and actually one thing I forgot to mention earlier, what you do not want to do in your alt text is say something like a photo of. It, it's an image. It clearly is an image or a photo or a photograph or, or whatever. We don't have to include that. It's very redundant if you do it. You just want to describe the image itself. So we could say, uh, an overhead angle of a shirtless man climbing a boulder outdoors. Something like that, I think, is a nice description of what's actually going on in that image. Uh, and then once again, we can save, refresh. We won't actually see the change now because we just added our alt text. But we have our logo coming in. Down here, we have our image that's right there. If we go back over to our other page, everything is coming in. And so for up till now, I think things are looking pretty darn good.